All right. you see. Thank you so much, Carlos. Much appreciated. And thank you guys for the great intro. Uh, so again, without further ado, thank you so much for coming on to the webinar. Um, Today we're going to talk about the new version of Echo House Site Survey, version 8.5, which is a pretty major uh, release for us, and uh, it has um, it's been a long time coming. And uh, well, here we are, all, almost there already. So you'll be getting a sneak peek of a product that has not yet been released, but we're targeting the release to happen uh, Miko, this year still, right? So so. Uh, uh, sorry, quickly, I'm Jussi, I run the business unit, and with me I have Nico Laurman, the product manager. So let's ask, ask the product guy when, when the product will be out, right? Probably in two weeks. Uh, uh, we're going to be our best. <laughs> exactly, and um, Nico just jumped into the webinar from the R&D room where he was furiously testing uh, the final tweaks of the product. So. Uh, how are you feeling overall? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. All right. Um, so, let's a couple of words about the agenda. So, uh, we're really quickly going to look at like why design Wi Fi, a couple of slides about that. Uh, then, for those of you who don't know our products yet, we're going to run through a couple of slides about our products and training, but that's going to go really quickly. And, and what we're going to focus on is really number three. So uh, the new version of the product, we're going to do a live demo and, and all that fun stuff. And then after that, we'll be answering uh, all the questions that there may be. All right. So um, first of all, uh, if you're not on Twitter, uh, all the fun stuff happens on Twitter, including invitations to the uh, webinars, all the latest and greatest information, invitations to beta, beta programs, and all that. So this is what we always say. We highly recommend you to uh, you know, join the Wi-Fi professional community on Twitter. You don't have to contribute, but at least uh, follow some people so that you got, get, uh, get your questions answered and get the latest news and things like that. All right. So um, we already went through this uh, open reality in Echo House. So Matt and Carlos are your main men for that. Open reality is our sole distributor in the UK, and we're really happy to work with you guys. So why should we care about designing Wi-Fi networks in the first place? This guy puts it pretty well. So always design the network as if you would take the support calls personally. And out of this idea, I made a couple of highly scientific uh, pie charts. First one of which uh, describes the time spent on Wi-Fi design. You know, if you take this very, very laid back approach where you kind of worry about things later, um, you spend very little time in designing the actual network in the planning or requirements gathering, but then you spend most of your time troubleshooting the network. But then um, this, this is what we would prefer. Uh, so you take some more time upfront on the requirements definition, planning, validation of the network. You will spend significantly less time troubleshooting network issues and uh, the total time spent on the network administration will be less, leaving you time to do, you know, something else besides troubleshooting Wi-Fi problems. All right, and that's this is why we actually exist as well. So, uh, for for Eka, how our business is in making Wi-Fi engineers' lives easier. Um, enabling you guys to do something else besides troubleshooting more. And for that, uh, we provide two methods. Our main business is sell the tools, uh, so tools for Wi-Fi engineers, planning tools, site survey tools, things like that. But we also provide, uh, with Open Reality in the UK, an extensive set of training services. For those of you who don't know what our products are, the flagship product is a Windows and soon Mac laptop-based site survey and 3D planner. So fully blown site survey, reporting, analysis, troubleshooting, planning tool. Then 
with that we all often bundle the spectrum analyzer uh, and actually a lot of the focus of this presentation will be on the spectrum analyzer itself and then we also sell an Android application for troubleshooting and lightweight surveys and finding access points and things like that. All right, so the Site Survey 3D Planner, a very powerful kind of all-in-one toolkit for laptops. And it, when, when you purchase this software package, it includes the license for the software as well as our Wi-Fi adapter for performing accurate site surveys. Then there's the mobile survey Android tool. Uh, troubleshooting, AP Finder, uh, lightweight site surveys, and it nicely integrates with uh, our flagship product, so you can transfer project files back and forth between the two. And then there's the Spectrum Analyzer. So the purpose of Spectrum Analyzer is really for discovering any non unwanted interference that might be there, like microwave ovens or, or wireless video cameras or things like that. And that's really what the Spectrum Analyzer does. It's a simple USB-based uh, device. Uh, really easy to snap that into your USB slot and, and clip the Spectrum Analyzer into your laptop, uh, lightweight, small size, and it works on both 2.4 and 5 GHz band. And with the version 8.5, it also comes with full integration to Ekahaus Site Survey, which will be very, very nice. So during your site survey, you will be able to analyze the Wi-Fi network uh, from the spectrum side as well. And after the survey, you can fully uh, view the spectrum from anywhere within the building based on where you were at any given time on the map. Also, it gives you nice real-time analysis capabilities as well. So, so you have all in one tool for, for uh, spectrum analysis. So that's for the products. And then a couple of words about the training. So the training we provide is really uh, consists of three layers, if you will. We have the uh, online training material, uh, which is free for, free for all, uh, no login, nothing like that required. You can find it at ekahow.com slash training. Uh, there's all kinds of videos of how to use the product, there's webinar recordings, uh, there's dozens of hours of video, um, many of which are made by Amanda or myself or Andrew or Mikko. Uh, go check them out, they're really useful for learning the product, learning Wi-Fi, things like that. Then there's one-to-one -one webinars, so um, our sales engineer Andrew, at any time he can schedule a webinar with you, if you haven't purchased the product, he can tell you how the product works, or if you already have purchased the product, uh, he, he can guide you through um, if, you, if you have questions about other products, for example, things like that. And, and in the UK, uh, Carlos actually is the Andrew, so uh, any UK customers can reach out to Carlos, and he's really the, the webinar machine. And then we have the ECAHO certification, uh, it's called ECAHO Certified Survey Engineer, a four-day hands-on training where either Devin Aiken or Keith Parsons typically uh, hosts a four-day intensive hands-on class where we not only learn how to use ECAHO products, but we also learn how to make RF design, RF validation the right way. So it's not just uh, how to use our products, it's much, much more than that. And you can find all the details from ekahow.com slash training, you can see the customer reviews of the training and uh, you know these have been very, very well liked. And uh, we also, we host these courses around the world from Singapore to Germany to UK to East Coast, West Coast America, and uh, pretty much all the courses we have hosted, and there's about 40 uh, each year, they have been all fully booked. And uh, the upcoming courses for UK are here. Uh, Carlos, you want to say a couple of words about the courses that you've had in the past and, and the future courses, things like that, or did I caught you, uh, catch you off guard there? Carlos? No, 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 any, we're, we're any here and ready. Um, no, well, the, the course is always fantastically received, and um, I know they're filling up very fast, so 
if you are interested in coming along to uh, the CSE, then please do let Matt or Steve know straight away because I think we have for the one in February only two or three places left. So let us know straight away and if you need further details, uh, please let us know in the chat line and Matt or Steve will get straight back to you. Wow, couple of places left only. So <laughs> sounds like um, for sure these will be fully booked. Sounds like we may need to do a, a third one in the UK huh? during 2016. We uh, probably could put, put on another two courses. So uh, definitely something for us to take offline and, and speak about uh, after the webinar today. Sounds good, sounds good. Uh, Miko, how are we on the question side of things? There's been already quite many questions so far, so yeah, keep them coming on in. Oh, by the way, there's one question about uh, when, uh, how, how about Ireland? When, when, when is the next one, the next ECSC training in Ireland? Let's well, take that one offline uh, and we'll find out for you, but uh, we'll definitely get that one answered. Very good. All right. So. All is well, we're good to continue to the actual beef. So before we jump to 8.5, a uh, couple of things about what we have done recently. So earlier this year, we already received Echo House Site Survey 8.0. So this was what, something like May, uh, March, April, uh, February timeframe? I, I, I don't even <laughs> recall anymore. But the, this was a major upgrade really to us. Uh, and, and the most major thing about it was the uh, CAD wall importation. So for those of you designing Wi-Fi networks, making network plans, uh, previously you had to draw the walls uh, of the building. And with uh, what we call WOW or wall outlining wizard, uh, you don't need to draw the walls manually anymore. They will be automatically extracted from the CAD layers. And, um, and I'm kind of debating for, for today's demonstration, should we start off or should we quickly also show the CAD wall importation or no? So if, if somebody wants to see that, uh, can you type something on the chat board or the questions board, uh, whether we should show the uh, wall importation or not, and then we'll act accordingly. Otherwise, we'll just focus on the new features. Anyway, version 8.0 also brought throughput testing. So no, no more is it only about data rates or signal strength. It's also, if you so desire, uh, about the actual per throughput performance of the network. So how much actual data can you send or receive through the network at any given point? So that includes uh, the throughput client, which is integrated into site survey, as well as the throughput server or mirror component. And uh, we also brought in a new licensing system. Doesn't show to customers you customers that much uh, unless uh, uh, you need to contact us, where you will just receive smoother customer service. And it shows to, to you in a way that you will get notifications of new releases of a house site survey automatically into the product. And um, not just that, but you will be told when the support runs out. So if you're in the support and maintenance program and you're entitled to new versions, uh, when you're running out of that support, we will notify you starting from 8.0. 8.0 was really well received. Uh, people really love the CAD wall importation, obviously, because it saves them uh, hours and hours of time per project. And more of these quotes you can find from, uh, you just Google Echo testimonials, uh, put that on Google and you will find tons of uh, people telling what they think about the product. All right. Then a couple of months ago, we released Echo House Site Survey 8.1, which included several a bit more minor features, including PDF map importation and different kinds of uh, ways to display transmit power. Um, disabling simulated radios, things like that. So it helps you better make high density designs because you can disable maybe some of the 2.4 gigahertz radios uh, in different uh, APs, you know, to avoid that channel overlap. And Miko is showing me a post-it note that CAD, CAD support, yes, demo please. So uh, I guess there was enough interest for that. Then a few weeks ago, we released Echo Site Survey 811 which uh, introduced a ton of access points and, and antennas, bringing the total number of simulated APs and antennas 
to like 1,449 or something like that. And uh, also tons of bug fixes. And for you heavy users, we're one uh, brought keyboard shortcuts, so you can many of the actions in Echo Site Survey is now doable uh, with with your keyboard, making for example the repetitive actions in network planning much much more easy. All right, on to version 8.5 then. Mikko, how are we on the question side of, of things? So uh, people want to see the uh, CAD support, is that correct? That is correct, yes, if you want to see it. So, uh, let's, let's quickly demo that too. Any, any frequent questions that uh, come up uh, really often that we should answer or you're, you're good with typing? Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 so if you're currently using ESS and all is going smoothly uh, and you're on 8 point something, then you should be good. Very good. So quickly before we jump into the demo, uh, 8.5 version highlights. The first and foremost, the Spectrum Analyzer integration, and we'll show it to you in a bit, uh, supports one or two Spectrum Analyzers. Uh, all you need is Echo Site Survey and the Spectrum Analyzer units, that's it, and uh, you just plug them in and ESS will automatically detect them and start using them. And it provides both map-based and on-the-spot interference analysis. Then there's uh, what we call custom notes. So for the longest time, people have asked us to provide a way to mark their own uh, customized notes on the map, whether, the, whether it's uh, short texts or, or images or cable runs or things like that. Uh, the network designers want to put other markings on the map as well that are necessarily not directly Wi-Fi access point or Wi-Fi signal related. Okay, and then uh, there's several other minor improvements as well, and which we will then be adding more and more uh, in the 8.5.x releases, but there will be improved uh, WOW or Wall Outlining Wizard or CAD Map support, uh, meaning that CAD files are very, very complex and we will just support different kinds of CAD files better. Then there's a more robust file saving, so that you know, if even if something goes wrong, uh, it it will still recover. Uh, it will do double and triple checking of of the file saves that you know all your project files are intact, things like that. And then uh, for the heavy users and for teams using ESS, there's a way to save your visualization settings so all of your team members will be seeing the same thing and when you send your project file to somebody else uh, everybody will be say, seeing the same thing or if you have your very uh, own preferences for settings of legend or settings of visualization options uh, you can save those. All right so that's it we're already 25 minutes past the hour so High time to jump into the demo. All right, gonna maximize the screen. And so here is Echo Site Survey 8.5, and let's actually minimize uh, the spectrum analysis list first. So when you start Echo Site Survey 8.5, it looks actually uh, very similar to, uh, to what the previous versions look like as well. But in the bottom here, we have a new row that shows all kinds of things that are grayed out here on the left. But on the right, we have the up button and the pop out button. Uh, the up button simply reveals a new real time, what we call real time frequency monitor or RTFM that uh, allows you to see both signals as well as spectrum in real time. And when you click the up arrow once, this is what you will see. You will see the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum in many different ways. So that's a lot of information for you right there. So let's take some time to uh, 
to take this all in. On the left hand side, um, we have what's called the timeline. And there we have different things uh, over time. So, first of all, uh, we have the 2.4 gigahertz signals. So we, we have uh, signals from all the APs on 2.4 gigahertz. On the very right hand side of the left hand side column, we have uh, time as it is now. And here on the very left hand corner, we have uh, two minutes ago. And right now, um, we are seeing there's a lot of signals on 2.4. And if I were just highlight one of the APs, uh, you can see it, it becomes yellow. And it also highlights it on the other columns, uh, on the middle column and uh, the right-hand side column as well. So for example, you could easily see what is this uh, strongest AP that I'm hearing here. And then you will see it elsewhere as well. Um, on the middle here, still looking at the left-hand side, on the, in the very middle, we have 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. And this is coming directly from the spectrum analyzer. And what you can see um, depends really on the color. So the more intense the color, uh, and the more uh, intense the green of the color, and especially the more intense the red, of, red shade of the color, we can see that, OK, that's more intense e signal either from Wi-Fi or from some kind of an interfering device. And for those of you who typically use a spectrum analyzer, this view would be tilted 90 degrees. So usually people call this waterfall view or something like that, uh, and it runs from top to bottom. But just to make more sense into this when used in combination with 2.4 gigahertz signals, we wanted to flip this uh, 90 degrees because we wanted you to see the signals as well as the spectrum at the same time and in the, in the same kind of timeline. And then looking still at the left hand side column, at the very bottom we have the column or uh, the box called active survey. And since our active survey testing is now happening on 5 gigahertz band, we're not seeing anything on 2.4 right now. However, uh, once we flip over to 5 gig and we'll do it in a second, we will see stuff here as well. Now in the middle, we are seeing uh, the colorful display is from the spectrum analyzer and the bars are coming from the network adapter. So the bars essentially mean Wi-Fi access points. So one, uh, one bar per AP, right? And this binds, unlike ESS 8.0's uh, real-time views, this binds all the different MAC addresses coming from the different a or coming from the same AP. So in other words, it binds together, if your access point is a multi-SSID AP, which they typically are, we will only show one bar for one physical AP binding all the uh, SSIDs together. Okay, so here we can see that on channel 1, 6 and 11, and even between the channels, we have a lot of activity going on. So definitely not your average enterprise network, looks more like an Ekaho lab, actually. And there's signals bouncing up and down, things like that. So in a typical enterprise network, you, you can easily start seeing like, okay, how crowded are my channels? What are the cha uh, channels my APs are on? Um, how is my channel overlap looking like? Things like that. And also you can relate that to the spectrum. So um, in this case, channel one, from based on the colors, it looks fairly heavily utilized. Uh, channel six and 11, as well, and then there's some narrow band interference that we can see with green color on chan between channels 12 and 13, which is kind of suspicious, doesn't look like Wi-Fi, something we might want to investigate a bit more closely later on. But no, no truly major uh, interference issues uh, in this display right now, mostly Wi-Fi. Then on the right hand side, and bear with me here because this, this display has, has, a, has a lot of stuff in it. On the right hand side, we have a list view of all the access points, their SSIDs, their technologies, and their supported data rates, as well as the channels they are on and the signals. So how, how I like to use it is, 
first of all get an understanding of what's out there and then um, I probably want to drill down for example to just one of the networks uh, trying to investigate what's going on with that particular SSID. So for that I can use the radio filter here. I could say yeah just show me the SSID tickle for example. And the radio filter then hides from the center view, from the left hand side a top view as well as from the right hand side table view. It hides all the other APs except the ones that uh, share that SSID. Okay? And that kind of makes a lot of sense especially in this messy network. Very useful tool. I'm going to turn back any SSID and we can now see again all the SSIDs. The table view, not only does it give you uh, the names of the APs, uh, the MAC addresses, the SSIDs, but it also helps, guides you through like, am I using the lowest data rate in all the APs? Maybe that is a bit of a problem. Am I using legacy technologies like 802.11g or am I still supporting 802.11b, like that one access point there? So, so that kind of obvious problems we can sh pretty quickly see just looking at the background color here, which is a bit yellowish for G and orange for B. Then we have the channel column and we can see that even one of the APs here is on channel 40 on, cha uh, on 2.4 gigahertz. Obviously a big mistake, thus uh, the uh, red background color. All right. So that's kind of how the real-time frequency monitor works. And this is just for one band. If we expand it, we will see the frequency monitor for both bands. So on the top, we have 2.4 gigahertz. And here in the bottom, we have 5 gigahertz. Same thing, spanning through all the 5 gigahertz channels, looking at all the APs, as well as the spectrum for 5 gig frequency space. And also now we have the active survey alive, as you can see here at the very bottom left hand side corner. So active survey is currently testing the network, no delay, no packet loss here at the time, so all is green. All right. And since we're using now two spectrum analyzers simultaneously, we are simultaneously scanning 2.4 and all of 5 gigahertz. And on the spectrum side of things, we can easily see that, sure, uh, actually pretty much all of 5 gigahertz is very underutilized except for this AP on channel 136, which just consequently might be the one we are using for uh, hosting this webinar. So this code meeting session seems to be uh, utilizing quite a bit of airspace. And if I wanted to highlight that AP, for, for example, from the center view, it automatically highlights it from the table view, which is kind of convenient. So I can immediately see, yeah, it's that AP uh, with SSID Echolan and uh, a MAC address ending 24D0. It's on channel 136 and supports rates uh, from 6 to 192 megabits per second. So this highlighting feature, uh, I like it very much. Finally, when you're using the real-time frequency monitor, you can pop out uh, both of these uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz displays by using the pop-out button here. And that allows you to get a separate window where all the same information resides. And right now, you will be able to view this window and ESS simultaneously. It's not that useful with a single monitor, but when you're working on your desktop with a dual monitor setup, it becomes super, super useful. And uh, we will sh show in the post spectrum analysis how this actually comes to life. Mikko, is there any uh, repeating questions on the, um, on the RTFM side of things? Um. Possibly. I haven't gotten that far, to be honest. I'm still, there's quite many questions, so I'm trying to... Oh, so I could probably jump in and that. There are, there's a trending question about 
what equipment is needed to show the new features. So uh, a lot of people asking about uh, do they need the um, spectrum analyzer and if so, um, do they need it in a, plugged in at the same time? Apologies not to read out anybody's name, but it, it's quite a common question. Excellent question. I'm sorry for not being very clear on that. So in order for the spectrum analysis uh, piece to work, you will need uh, one or two Ekahaus spectrum analyzers. So, so those are not the NIC 300s, uh, those are different uh, boxes that you would need on top of the uh, NIC 300s. And uh, spectrum analyzer is included, one of them is included in the Ekahaus site survey premium pack for the new customers of Ekahaus site survey. So just to be more clear, if we look at the display here, the colors you are seeing, the, uh, let's say the intensity, the interference, things like that, uh, the colors you're seeing in the center view, those come from the spectrum analyzer. The bars uh, are there even if you use just the NIC adapter. Similarly, on the left-hand side view, the signal, uh, signals over time comes from the Wi-Fi adapter, but the center view with the spectrum, uh, that comes from the spectrum analyzer. So you will, this view, what I'm saying is this view will still be useful even if you don't have a spectrum analyzer, but it will become much, much more useful if you do have one. Fantastic. And uh, other questions uh, are very much along the lines of, uh, do you still need the separate software, um, which I think you've, you've covered, but might be worth just re reiterating there. Absolutely. We still, um, whenever you buy the Ekahaus Spectrum Analyzer, you will get the separate channelizer software as well, but that is not required for any of these features. So you don't need to have channelizer running. You don't even need to have channelizer installed. All you need for this functionality that you see here is the hardware units, Spectrum Analyzer hardware units, as well as Ekahaus Site Survey. But for more in-depth uh, spectrum analysis and device lo locationing and things like that, uh, I would recommend the Channelizer tool then. One of the, the last questions before we move on, I'm just conscious of time, is, um, and I suspect this is something you'll, you'll cover later in the, uh, in the webinar, but uh, about the information we're seeing here, is it going to be covered in the reporting? Excellent question. The information will be covered in the reporting. However, uh, due to the time pressure we are on, quite honestly, <laughs> Nico is dancing and sweating at the same time, being joyous and furious of the timetable. But anyways, um, where was I? So yes, everything that you see regarding the spectrum analysis will be reportable, but that will be version 8.5.1 which is due out late January or February. So absolutely, we are adding the reporting capabilities as we speak, but give us a little bit more time. No pressure then, Mika. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. That, that pretty right. much covers the, the questions uh, at this point. Very good, very good. Thanks, Carlos, for jumping in. And, and anytime you have any, any questions, just uh, feel free. So. Okay, that's, that's all nice that you can in real time analyze the spectrum, but let's look how it works actually on a map. Oh. Just give me a second to uh, open the file here. Here we go. So here we have a very short survey of a very crowded uh, Wi-Fi airspace but we will get, get to the point very soon. The idea is that when you're starting to perform your site survey, and, and one of the main requirements we had for the spectrum analyzer integration is uh, when you go out and start to do your survey, you shouldn't need to do anything uh, to collect the spectrum data as well. And that's what we see here uh, when, when we opened ESS, the new two of the new uh, windows here, you can see spectrum from 1 to 14 and spectrum 36 to 165 here in the top right corner. 
those two just appear there indicating that, yeah, I'm collecting successfully spectrum data from two of the analyzers that I have connected, but you don't need to do anything to set them up. They will automatically, just like the Wi-Fi adapters, they will automatically configure themselves to ideal settings uh, that we assume most people would use, which is, you know, if you just have one spectrum analyzer, we will scan all of 2.4. If you have a second spectrum analyzer, that's great. We will also scan all of 5 gigahertz. And by clicking on the spectrum view, we actually get this channel dialog where you can change the channels that you want to scan with each of the spectrum analyzers. So if, for example, I only wanted to scan UNI I1 frequencies or, or whatnot, if I wanted to limit down the area or the channels to scan and also at the same time speed up the scanning, I could very easily do that and then the uh, spectrum analyzer just reconfigures itself and start scanning those particular channels. I'm going to put that back to all channels. So my guess would be that 95% of the cases you would scan all the channels uh, for 2.4 and 5 if you have two spectrum analyzers, but it just gives you that flexibility to configure. All right. So that's, that's how it works. So, so when you start surveying, just like normally, you have the two survey modes, continuous and stop and go surveys. The default is continuous, but whichever you choose, the surveying works just like before. There's absolutely no difference. We will just, in the background, collect data also from the spectrum analyzers. You will see absolutely no, no difference. You won't need to do any pre-configurations whatsoever. The difference comes in when you have finished your uh, spectrum survey work. First of all, there's a couple of things that you can see from the spectrum analyzer, such as spectrum channel power or spectrum utilization. For example, the utilization tells you how utilized is the airspace in different parts of the map. So, for example, we quite surprisingly, this uh, test uh, test lab here is very, very utilized in a lot of locations. So this can be either um, utilization from Wi-Fi or utilization from interferers. And typically mo most of it is utilization from Wi-Fi, but uh, there is of course at times, you know, these microwave wireless, wireless video cameras, things like that. But the heat maps, that we provide, that's just, you know, the overview and, and very uh, small part of the story. The beauty comes when we start using the new survey inspector. So you go to the survey tab, you take the survey inspector tool, and many of even the current ECHO site survey users probably have not used survey inspector tool. But with the spectrum analyzer integration and with the new improved survey inspector, now is the time to start using it. I know we have Keith Parsons on the line and uh, he probably has been, or I know he, he's a big fan of even the old spectrum uh, or survey inspector and uh, with him we actually co-developed the new one and this really takes uh, the advanced Wi-Fi analysis to a new level. So. With the survey inspector, we can click on any point on the map and then analyze that point, not just from the Wi-Fi perspective that we can see here, but also from the spectrum analysis perspective. So instead of, you know, what we saw before in this very same view was live, real time. Now what we can see here is we are looking at recorded data from 2.4 gigahertz and we are looking at a 60 second uh, duration of the captured data. So it means we clicked on this spot and we are looking around plus 30 seconds and minus 30 seconds from that spot. For example, for the spectrum analysis. So the spectrum view here, the color intensity shows what was collected 30 seconds before and after to give you that very precise and accurate view of the spectrum space around this point in time. 
and it's not just the spectrum. We can similarly see what Wi-Fi signals were there, how high were the signals. We can see the trend of the Wi-Fi signals here, like uh, was the signal increasing or decreasing near that point. We can see when you were running out of coverage on the uh, active survey. We can see whether you were roaming, maybe at that point, maybe you were losing packets when you were roaming, things like that. So many of the things that you could actually, the old users, old advanced users, remember from the old survey inspector, but this would be like a more intuitive uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz separated, and we bind all the MAC addresses of different uh, SSIDs together. So this is just a, a simplified, yet <laughs> on the other hand, more advanced view of the Wi-Fi network at any given point. And of course, even for that, we can look 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequency spaces simultaneously. And now you can see where the pop-out really comes handy with multiple monitors. So we can see the frequency monitor and the map at the same time and see the differences in frequencies as we move along. And for example, let's go back and look at just the uh, 5 gigahertz view. So I'm going to switch. Uh, when you're looking at this screen, just half of it or just one of the uh, re real-time frequency monitors, you can switch the bands in here. And now, since we were associated on the 5 gigahertz and we seem to have these APs only on the 5 gig, you can see that the tool automatically colors my access points with different colors on the signal, signal view here, and it gives the different colors here in the table view as well. We can see the active survey, the spectrum, and then we can scroll in here using the scroll bar to any point of time or to any point on the map. So we can see the orange dot on the map right now is here, right, where we have spectrum utilization, something around 50%. And then we can see what exactly was going on at that given point of time. And for example, if we scroll a little back, we can see that now we are close to the point of roaming where we roam from AP Echolan 8D10 to Echolan 91B0. And before we roamed, we actually started losing a lot of packets. The, these would be the red areas here in the active survey. And that's probably why the client adapter also roamed because it started losing packets perhaps to the, due to the low signal strength that we were experienced seeing on the associated AP at that point of time. All right, so that's a quick overview on how the re real-time frequency monitor works and how that also the same view works when you're looking at recorded data as well as the heat maps. So everything can be shown at the same time. Multiple monitors gives you advanced analysis. And you can go into as much detail on the Wi-Fi side as you need. But then all the familiarity of the 8.1, 8.0 ESS user interface is still there. So if you decide not to use the spectrum features, if you decide not to use the real-time frequency monitor, you have the option to do that. It will only take you a couple of pixels of space uh, from the bottom of the screen, no problem there. All the other features uh, for ESS 8 are used just like normal. So we also didn't want to break um, the usability of the product for the existing users. So that's kind of the main things of the spectrum analysis. And it seems like we're running low on time, but maybe we could very quickly look at the, uh, at the notes, since that's a very frequently uh, asked 
feature as well. So let me uh, let me just open up the uh, the window here. So the idea with the notes is that the installer of the network can easily associate information into locations on the map. Whether it's something interesting that you saw, whether it's a, it's a cabling closet, whether it's uh, a picture of something that you need to show uh, for later, things like that. Anything that's relevant to either the network plan or the network uh, site survey. Okay. So, all, all we have added for, for the notes is really this. So one more icon on the planning tab where we select what kind of notes do we want to use. So do you want to insert a text note, picture note, area note, or cable note? And that's the use is pretty simple. With the text notes, you just click on the map where you want the text node to be added. Then you just punch in the text. And there we go. And it truncates it automatically. Picture note, you guessed it's pretty much the same thing. And with picture note, you can either select, uh, select a picture from your hard drive or utilize the web camera. I'm going to push my luck with this development version. Woo! <laughs> Two very sharp looking young men there. And you can also add text to the picture notes as well. How good are those guys looking? I'm going to hit OK. And that note will also be, uh, be associated in the map. And as mentioned, these will be also fully reportable starting from version 8.5.1. Area note is a bit different. So we, we had customers who wanted to mark specific regions on the map. Uh, so, so they had, for example, areas they could not access or areas that were outside of the scope of the surveys or things like that. They just wanted to highlight those areas. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use empty visualization and I'm going to say this area is outside the scope of my work. So I'm going to draw a polygon around it and I'm going to name it outside the scope of my work. So of course these kind of uh, notes have always been there for you guys. but. Now they are in one place, now they are in that one project file, now they are easily accessible, now they are easily reportable. So if everybody uses the same tool, all they need is to you know, use these things and, and they'll be good to go. Last thing I want to quickly show you is the cable note. So not very surprisingly, you can draw cable runs around the map. And the tool also shows you how long the cable is at the current point. And that's the total length of the entire cable run. And then you can also punch some text into the cable. Here we go. So it's already two minutes past the hour. Uh, so I think we're going to go over. I think it's time to um, open the line for questions. These are the two main features of 8.5. There are others, but um, no need to go through those here. We already uh, are low on time, except I did promise the CAD uh, importation, didn't I? So we, we still have one and, a five, one, one and a half minutes for that. So let's do it. let's do it real quickly. So the CAD importation. What it means is usually you would need to bring in the map and manually draw the walls, but if you use the CAD importation, you just need a, either DXF or DWG file, so a CAD file of supported format. Here 
here we have the map and then on the left you have the layers on the right you have the map and with the blue color we mark this currently selected uh, CAD layer so for example here we have the elevators of the building highlighted if I took the layer wall full here we actually have all the walls of the of this uh, drawing in the same layer so I'm gonna say this will be this layer I want to be drywall and often it is the case that the exterior walls are actually a different layer from the interior walls so in this file it's a bit more inconvenient since we may have to do some post editing if the exterior walls are, are significantly different uh, from the interior ones then we, um, this is great but it's not enough we also need the doors of the building because uh, and the doors are tough because they are marked like this on the map as you can see with the blue color but ESS automatically closes the doors as well so it gives you the worst case appropriate worst case scenario for RF design and I'm gonna say these doors are regular uh, interior office doors of four decibels all right and then I'm gonna put in some elevator shafts there as well and I'm gonna put the elevator shaft material there All right, so that kind of covers the building pretty nicely, or this floor. Uh, then we can see the scale here, so the ESS automatically also detects the scale of the drawing, so no more uh, errors in your planning, no more uh, under or over provisioning of APs due to an erroneous scale. This automatically comes now from the CAD drawings. We press import and the tool crunches the numbers for a bit. And this is the phase you, where you would traditionally uh, draw the walls for, you know, for a floor size of this, you would draw them for probably, I don't know, it would take me one hour to draw all the walls of this floor. For the tool, it took probably, what would you say, uh, one minute to define all of the walls plus all of the doors plus all of the elevators of the building and now that we start planning the Wi-Fi network we can do it just like before just as before so whose APs am I gonna use Aruba AP 325 place it on the map and it works just like before so and of course this works for multi-floor planning you can you know create bring in multiple maps place them on top of one another see the signal bleed through through the floors see the interference bleed through through the walls uh, or through the floors and things like that so that's kind of how the uh, automatic CAD importation works now we are already over time I appreciate your patience those of you who are still on still on board and it seems like pretty much everybody still is so Carlos uh, should we um, open this up for questions next steps things like that absolutely absolutely um, there's a couple of questions that seem to be reoccurring so I think for, for those that missed it, it'd be useful just to reiterate the expected release date of 8.5, uh, if we can. Even if it's Excellent. general. Uh, Miko, you want to do the honors? Sure, absolutely. So we're targeting the release 8.5 uh, on December 18th. But there are some quality issues still. So while we're struggling with those, let's hope we, we meet that target. Very good, very good. So it will be released when it's done, but we're hoping this month still. Fantastic, cool. thanks guys. Yep, so as soon as uh, we have those, uh, will it be the, uh, the same license keys? Will it just be uh, an upgrade, do we think? It will be uh, the same license key actually will work with you forever. Uh, so you will be able to download and install and and uh, activate ESS 8.5 if you have your maintenance contract up to date. So your license key, thanks to the new licensing system, your license key no longer changes. Fantastic. So uh, 
As soon as it is available, guys, obviously for the UK, Matt and Steve will be in contact and uh, we'll make sure that we can get those out as quickly as possible. For those guys in uh, different regions, um, your local representation through ECHO will, will be in contact with that one. Um, you see, there is a, another question that seems to be coming up well, quite a lot, um, and that's just around um, the, the new spectrum analyzer feature, so about whether we uh, customers will need two spectrum analyzers to do both 2.4 and 5 gig. Um, would, if you wouldn't mind, if we could just re-clarify that point, that's come up quite a lot. Very good question, and, and this is kind of different from how the Wi-Fi NIC adapters work. So yes, for simultaneously using uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz for spectrum sweeping, you will need two spectrum analyzers. They will not alternate between the frequencies. They're just not fast enough to do that. So, so yes, for simultaneous 2.4 and 5 gigahertz spectrum analysis, you will need two of the analyzers. Fantastic. Okay, as soon as uh, obviously uh, Matt's uh, available what, and Steve, what they'll do is they'll, they'll be in contact uh, to talk to all of you uh, about the upgrades and uh, the options for the spectrum analyzers as well. Um, another reoccurring question and, and one that I think people seem very keen on is um, a lot of people have been asking about Mac support and, and when that's been available. I, I know that obviously uh, you guys are focusing on getting 8.5 out, but uh, would you like to maybe, now that we've got the audience listening, uh, give an update on that one and when you think that might be available? Absolutely. Uh, we actually already have a, a set into stone the uh, release date of the Mac version, and it's when it's done. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, we've done a lot of headways with that, and we actually are already um, alpha testing the Mac version internally here at Ekahau. So, so yeah, well, we already have it functional with some limitations. Uh, it's already usable here. So we are targeting first half of next year for the Mac release. Uh, that's, that's what we are we've set ourselves as an internal target, but we will release it as soon as it's done, and uh, people will not require uh, a separate license key or additional fee for that. It will be available for the existing 8.5 users. Fantastic. Um, so guys, we're getting so many questions in that we can't possibly answer all of them. So, but what, what we'll try and do is we'll try and answer all of our questions offline after the webinar today. And obviously, any technical questions, uh, obviously, Mika will have access to all of these questions. And as he's available, we'll try and answer as many of them as we can for you all. Certainly, um, we'll certainly uh, try and uh, put uh, maybe uh, if, if there's some suitable um, video how-to or how-to video guides that we can make out of them, then certainly we'll put those forward as we can. Um, I think, guys, what we'll do is, I mean, anybody that would like to talk to you, UC and Miko directly, please do uh, raise your hand. Um, I think we've pretty much answered Ever, all the questions coming up again and again. There are some questions about the Surface Pro that we would take offline. Um, we'll certainly be able to help you there. Um, but anybody that would like to ask questions directly of UC or, or Miko, then, then please do raise your hands. And what we'll do is we'll, one by one, um, unmute the lines. But for those of you that uh, need to go, thank you very much for, for giving us uh, your time. Anybody that would like one-to-one -one demos, please let us know in the chat line, and Matt and Steve will harvest those and, and organize those for you. Um, anybody that's interested in the training, then please, again, do let us know by the chat line, and we'll get those sorted and get details of the, the training courses. For those outside the UK, what we'll do is we'll pass back to Ekahau to, uh, to organize in your region with your local partner. But uh, anybody that would like to uh, ask a question, raise the, the hand on the, on the chat. Right. Well, while we're waiting for, for somebody to raise their hand, guys, thank you very much for a fantastic presentation today. Um, um, Keith, uh, I know you've been uh, chatting in the background there, so thank you very much for all that you do for us. Um, training courses that always go down very well, and uh, 
we always get people asking it, is Keith Parsons going to be taking the next training course? So uh, fantastic to have such enthusiastic users. So uh, thank you for all that you've done for us as well. I realize I, I say that Keith can't actually answer. So uh, there we go. Guys, we're not getting anybody raising their hands today. Um, so I, I think what we'll do is we'll give people a, another sort of uh, 30 seconds or so. And we'll see if we uh, we do get any questions, but it looks as though we've covered it all for now. <laughs>